nominate her for chairman. <laughs> wow. Uh -oh. Sorry. Speak you speak to lose. <laughs> oh. We'll call the uh, beer board meeting to order for uh, August 20th, 2015, 6 o'clock. Um, we do have a quorum. Um, we'll look over our minutes from the June 11th regular um, meeting. And we'll need to get those approved after, make after everyone's read over. <laughs> I reviewed them uh, in depth. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Well, hang on just a minute. We'll 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 hold. That you didn't motion. read your your version. I didn't get mine. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Now we'll turn it over to uh, the attorney, Nicholas Christensen, and uh, let him take care of our uh, nominations for the election, uh, chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we appreciate your service for the last year. And so now that your term is up, uh, I will entertain a motion to nominate and elect a chairman for a one-year term. Well, I nominate the present chairman for another term. We have a, or a motion to nominate Mr. Dana uh, Blair as the chairman for the next year. Do we have a second? I'll make a second. We have a second. With that said, if we could do a roll call vote, uh, all in favor say aye. If you're opposed, say nay. Ms. Hines? Aye. Uh, not you, Mr. Blair. Mr. Jolly? <laughs> aye. And Ms. Sullivan? Aye. And what if I say nay? <laughs> well, you're, uh, you've I got it outnumbered. Uh, outnumbered. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Chairman Blair. You have uh, succeeded in getting a, another year term as the chairman. And I'll turn it back over to you to take motions to nominate and elect a vice chairman for a one-year term. All right. We'll make the uh, nominations for vice chair. I'll make the motion, Ms. Hines. And I will second that motion. Thank you. You're welcome. I guess we need to make this uh, a vote now. So uh, I'll say aye. Mr. Child. Aye. Aye. All in favor. So there we go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Off-premises beer permit for Circle K stores located at uh, 5183 Murfreesboro Road. Uh, if you don't mind, please come up, state your name, and your position with Circle K. I'm Rose Bose, and I'm a market manager for Circle K. All right. Rose Bose, B-O-Z-E. Z. -E. Z. Okay. The background checks have come back, and everything's good. Should um, have the two stores. The other one's closed. Well, we'll I wasn't sure if you had it on there or not. Okay. <laughs> we'll do one at a time. Does anyone have any question, questions for Ms. Bose? Are you currently operating or selling beer at any of the locations right now? We are. We're still under the pantry until September 14th. Okay. Or uh, if you approve the beer I license, I don't know if it's effective now or what, how that will work okay. if approved. Are you currently under any investigations uh, criminally? for the store, is the store in any type of investigation right now? To my knowledge, no. I've had this area for almost two years now, okay. and to my knowledge, no, we've not had any 
beer violations. Okay. And how many employees do you have there that will be um, able to sell? Uh, which one? Which store it, are we? The store <laughs> that we're, we're working on right now. Fifty-one eighty-three Murfreesboro Road, which is the old BP station. Is that correct? No, that's closed. Okay. There should right. be the big one over here and the one on Waldron. So which the one, one is the Circle K? The one in front of the Food Lion. Okay. Okay. Um, Kangaroo. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll right have to now, go back and look at it. right now we currently have eight employees there. How many did you? Eight. Say? Eight employees. Okay. And under the pantry, um, our RVP program elapsed because Circle K bought us. Um, we have applied. We're working on filling out our applications for RVP, the RVP program under Circle K. Yes, ma'am. So we are working on that. What type of stop gaps do you have to prevent underage selling right in now. place right now what we have is all employees go through a CBT process which is on hand the training yes, um, in that CBT packet is a um, age sensitive and they have to score a hundred on it or they cannot proceed or even get on the register until they score a hundred okay. and then every 60 days every employee that works for us has to go back through a refresher's course and that's managed by their employee ID number, so that's how we check it. N no one knows their employee ID number, of course, their supervisor and them. So no one else can go in and take it for them. They do take their own. Okay. And they have to score 100 on so that as well. So there's some type of flag that comes up every six months, yes. three months? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then, of course, if we get approved for the RVP, we, everybody will go back through that. And that's a refresher's course every 30 <coughs> to 60 days as well. And all of your employees have background checks done prior to employment? They have background checks? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank we you. We do. Okay, any other questions? I have no questions. I'll make a motion to approve the permit. I'll okay, second have that. A motion, have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Now we'll go on to the second one, which is which is Circle K stores, stores located at 519 Waldron Road. And we'll discuss that one now. Same programs in place. Yes, it is. And we have um, six employees there. Six. Are all the employees there eligible to process the sale of beer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, they all have to go through that CBT program, which is computer-based training, before they can even get on the register. Okay. And uh, what um, program are you using that when they use it, uh, is it the one where they enter the date so they know that they are a proper age to purchase or they use the calendar? On the register? Yes. yes. Okay. It, if it's um, beer or even for beer, everybody in the state of Tennessee has to be carded. Yes, so right. it'll, it pops up on the screen that they have to enter the date. Awesome. Thank you. And if they override it, they are subsane to termination. So they're not supposed to override it at all. We were working on it to where they could set up our registers to where they cannot override it at all. Okay. Is there an alert system within that program that notifies you if they do override the program? As of right now, no. Okay. It'd just say okay or you have to put the age and it'll tell you if they're underage. Okay. So is there any way of tracking that if they do override the program? Um, to my knowledge, no. Now, Circle K, we will have new registers coming in, and I'm not sure if theirs will be any better than what we have now. But it will meet at least the same standards? Oh, yes, yes. We don't okay. train them to override. We train them to physically look at the ID and key it in. So right. they don't know that they can override. Okay. <laughs> good thing. <laughs> yeah, we don't train them that way, so. Right. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Okay, do I have a motion? 
A motion to approve. Okay. I'll make second. a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Do I need anything from? Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item of business is recommendation to the board of mayor and alderman to uh, admin section 8-317 of the Laverne Mutual, uh, Mutual Code regarding hours of sale. So everyone has a letter. Uh, if you'll read over that, uh, it's discussing uh, the hours uh, requesting to be changed. And uh, the next sheet of paper tells the uh, hours from Rutherford County, Murfreesboro, Smyrna, Noblesville, Nashville, Mount Juliet, Lebanon, and so on. So, so we'll open this up for discussion. Chairman, if I may make a couple of comments. Uh, okay. Of course, the Laverne hours currently, you cannot sell between the hours of 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. and uh, 3 a.m. Uh, and 12 p.m. noon on Sundays. Um, in, in looking through the different cities in, in Rutherford County uh, this afternoon, you know, you, you can kind of see that there's, there's kind of a standard pattern. Uh, Rutherford County, Murfreesboro, um, Nashville, they're all the same. 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. on weekdays, and then uh, 3 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, Smyrna is the only one that has basically one time frame which is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. every day. Uh, so they're, they're kind of the oddball out there. Uh, and then Lebanon has different uh, times for on-premises versus off-premises, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, and theirs is from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, weekdays. This is for on-premises. And then Sundays from 2 a.m. to noon. And then off-premises are 2 to 6 and two to noon on Sundays. So, you know, there is some, some variations throughout the different cities. Um, of course, if you look at Laverne, we actually allow sales an hour earlier every day except for Sunday. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's kind of a little give and take, uh, in my opinion, just depending on what the board would like to do. If you all would like to discuss it and, and make a recommendation tonight, that would be fine. If you don't feel comfortable making a recommendation tonight, you know, you can take it home with you and think about it for a month, and we can bring it back at the next meeting next month and, and do some sort of recommendation uh, to the Board of Maryland, because this is an ordinance that will take uh, approval by them in an ordinance form. So right. just wanted to bring this to your consideration and, and uh, see what you would like to see. All right. Well, we'll open it up for discussion right now and see what the board wants to do. So, anybody want to take off on it? Well, I'll make a comment. I, I'm, I'm actually intrigued. I don't want to say I hadn't considered this section of the ordinance, but part of me wonders why are we selling beer until 3 o'clock in the morning? It, I mean, that's, I know that's not exactly uh, what the person who brought this to our attention had in mind, but I mean, it just seems like your, your DUIs are going to be higher, your domestic violence are going to be higher if you have people who are drinking all hours of the night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I certainly see, you know, the potential to change this. I'm just not sure you know, if we're going to open it up. I, I think it's worth considering, you know, the whole process. I mean, you, you look here, you know, Nolansville ends their sales at midnight. Uh, but it seems like most of the others are, I see, 2 a.m. And, and 3 a.m. on several of these. Obviously, there's the consideration we're a small town with easy access to, to you know, cross the border and, and get something at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in Nashville or 3 a.m. in Smyrna until those hours. So, I don't know. From my understanding of the letter, the main thing or the main concern is the, the city revenue going to other places. Right. Um, so what I would be interested in seeing is possibly 
some type of information that um, informs us of that or to kind of let us know where the revenue is going, what are we losing, if anything at all. Um, right. I think that would be helpful in kind of making that determination as well. Might be difficult to, to prove, get that information to prove right. how much the it, sales revenue you're losing. It's not something that we can require it's a time, from, it's the, a time from the uh, vendors, from the, from the stores. Uh, and of course, you know, when you're talking business tax, things like that, it's legally we cannot issue. get that information. Correct. So, you know, uh, I'm not sure how easy it would be to get that information. And I would say this is an assumption. I mean, I, right. I don't it is. know that we're really losing that much versus, I mean. Yeah. Well, um, as the states in here, it says Smyrna is currently selling beer at 6 a.m. Yes. But if Laverne is doing it an hour earlier, I don't know where the complaint is. And as my fellow um, board member has stipulated, I, I am deeply concerned about the criminal activities because I would like to hear something from the chief of police about their um, drunk driving stops how many they had at their, um, you know, look and search, because I, I just would like to know how are we aggressively dealing with that, the open intoxicants, and that is a, a leading element when it comes down to um, domestic issues. You know, we can't say it's the number one thing, but it can kind of lighten, make that situation a little bit worse. So that's one of my concerns. And I, I do really appreciate looking at Lebanon having that off-premises difference in between on-premises, because that's something that I think we should look at and see if that would be conducive for us as well. I, I think if you look at the letter, their main concern is on Sundays. Right. I don't think they're asking for any changes on the weekdays. I think they're okay. looking at a minimum to, to be able to sell at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. So you're looking at a two-hour window that they're, that they're asking for now. I mean, we can certainly ask the, the police chief if they've got any statistics on, you know, DUI stops on Sunday mornings, things Between like that. Between 10 a.m. and Between noon. Between 10 a.m. and noon. I mean, I don't know how, yeah. you know, many there are at that time. Previously but. working motor vehicle accidents and things like that, there wasn't a big, you know, issue with that. Right. So, but that's just my opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'll reiterate, as our, as our vice chairman said, I think that, um, you know, I, I would like to look at this on the other side, too. Should, should we be, should we be selling beer until 3 a.m.? I, I, I recognize the fact that that's not what this person intended us to review, but if we're mm -hmm. going to review it, I think it should be considered. Mm -hmm. So. And yeah, we can certainly ask the chief to pull some stats together and see what he can find and and we can bring that back to you next month if that's what you would like to do. I think that's what we, I mean, is that what the board is I, I feeling like right that. now? Yeah, I, I would like uh, that. Right. I'll do a motion to that effect. Right. Uh, can I have a motion of how you want this done? Uh, between? Defer? To, no. Well, well, we'll defer voting on this issue right now. Uh, that way we can get some statistics from the police department. I think that's your motion if you made that motion right now. Yes, yes, that's exactly motion what I did. Motion for deferral to obtain yeah. additional information based on so, this discussion. So, Mr. Jolly made the motion. I'll second it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you make the motion? I'll make a motion <laughs> to defer until the next meeting. Yes. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Well, Mr. Chairman, if I could interject, let's just remind the board, just as a nice refresher, that you all can't talk about this amongst yourselves. Of course, you can do your independent research, and if you have any questions for Bruce or myself or the chief, go through Bruce, but don't discuss it amongst yourself until we reconvene an uh, open forum. Right. Absolutely. Any other business to be brought up tonight? If not, I have a motion to adjourn. I second that. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.